In our last section, while we were trying to execute the test, we got an error and I told that this exception is happening because of the unrecognized configuration section within our uh, app.config file. And this is really, really true because this particular configuration element is not even recognized by our app.config unless until you register the custom configuration within the configuration section as like how the spec flow has it in here. So we need to create a section with name of what is called as a EA test configuration because that's what is the configuration name that we have. And we also have to give the type here. So the type is going to be the fully qualified type name of the configurations elements, which is nothing but our, I guess it is this one. So I'm going to just copy this and I'm going to paste it over here. And then we have to give the EA test configuration, right? And it is sitting with a namespace of what is called as Appium EA framework, right? So this is where the registration of the configuration actually happens. So I'm not really going to run this particular test. Rather, I'm going to put a breakpoint here and I'm going to see like really the initialization of the configuration is going to happen. So I'm still kind of not believing my code. So I'm just going to hit a breakpoint there. So let's go into the breakpoint and see what's really happening. So you can see that the error is actually not happening. At least that's the good news. And if I just hover here, oops, we got one more error. It says the test setting is not recognized. Uh, let's quickly see what's really happening there. So if you come to this particular code and see what's really happening, this particular test settings is actually sitting in the EA configurations. Uh, this is test settings. Oops, it seems like we have not given the property or the configuration property for the test setting itself. So we have to give that particular property uh, attribute that I have completely missed it here. So I'm going to give that here. And now if I try to run this and see what's really going to happen, that's that's the only great mistake that we made in our previous code. So let's try to go over here. There we go. It seems like the platform name is now being taken, which is really cool. And also the AUT path, really cool. And the Chrome driver path is also available and the device name is also available. That's really, really cool. So all these values are going to be passed or fed into the input of the particular Appium server and also the Appium extensions. Now, hopefully the application is should be spawned. There we go. It seems like the application is currently running and it is also running the test without any problem, which means now our configuration that we have created, the custom configuration that we have created is really working as expected. Really, really cool. So it seems like the code that we have written is really working fine without any problem. And that's the custom configurations here, right? So this is the custom configuration that I was talking about in our slide. And this is what is going to be really adding the value. So if you're going to run your test with the different settings, let's say you want to run this test in the iOS operating system, you can just paste it over here. Uh, you can say this has uh, something like production or something like that. And then you can change the AUD path to APA path. And then here for the platform name, you can just give it as iOS and you can give the device name, whatever device name that you want. And similarly for the Chrome driver, you can give that as well. So that's the power of the custom configuration. You can keep on extending this code to work with whatever level of extension that you want. So that's the custom configuration guys. This is how we can create it. In our next video, we are going to split the whole framework chunk that we have written so far because it's keep on growing and we are mixing and matching both the test layer and the framework layer within one single project. We're going to split them into two different projects so that you can see there is a receiver and supplier model so that it can be more easily isolatable so that we can maintain the code more like a framework level. So as I said before in our season two starting that all the codes that we are going to write is going to be more like a bottom up approach. That's what exactly we are doing so far. We have written the whole framework and we are splitting it at the end of the course. Whereas in my other courses, we used to split it before and then we start building it. But this time we are doing it in a completely other way around. And it's also really making more sense that why we are doing all this stuff while we start progressing in our code. Thank you.